All right, everyone. Hello. Welcome back to Kerbalistic. We are starting off episode four with a fantastic launch of our new communication network. Yeah, our booster failed to ignite and we just immediately tipped over. So great start to the episode. Hopefully it doesn't continue. Uh, the, the trend doesn't continue. But, you know, it's Kerbal Space Program. We have part failures. Of course it's going to continue. It happens on the very next launch. Yeah, that's the thing with these part failure mods. You really just gotta keep flying the same boosters until the reliability goes up. So it's just a matter of time. Honestly, I should get a um, airplane going and just strap some of these boosters and parts to the plane and just test it in flight so I can build up reliability while making everything recoverable so my funds don't go down and my time isn't wasted with all these contraptions. Anyways, we try and go into orbit without the boosters, but it doesn't have the TWR to actually get into orbit on its own, so it eventually falls back to Earth. But on our third launch, we again have another failure, so it's really not going well for us uh, at the beginning of this episode. The uh, communication network is just not... we're just not having it today. It's just not working. I try and bring it back down to the ground and kind of like recover it, and we do end up recovering some of the parts, but... Uh, it ends up not being a successful launch by any means. So our fourth launch actually turns out to be a success. So yes, finally a success. Uh, we have a good booster ignition. The core works perfectly and our upper stage takes us into orbit. Yeah, this is gonna be our new communications network. It's just gonna have um, one of those relay antennas so we can bounce communication signals back to low curve in orbit and the MUN. I really should have put another communication relay dish on there instead of that big antenna because I really didn't need it. And if I put another one of those um, relay antennas, then it would have been uh, like not double the range, but it would have had probably the range to go out to Minmus maybe. So a bit of a missed opportunity there. Um, I launched three more of these but i've skipped through the launches because it's it's literally the same rocket and we have a lot to get through t today as you can see it's an 18 minute video so yeah we have a lot to talk about so i ended up launching three of these and i spent a ton of time off camera figuring out what was wrong with comm network because they were just barely connecting to each other and that was not right and so it turns out that on hard mode it uh, sets the comm network down to 0.65 I believe here for the range and that is just completely incorrect especially since I'm using the outer planets mod so I bumped that up all the way up to I believe 4.96 it was uh, pretty close to 5 so now it's more realistic for actual comm net ranges into the outer planets which is what we need Anyways, I digress here. We are launching the Endurance Test Flight to finally complete our 30-day stay in space. And of course, Bill and Bob are going to get seats on this flight. It couldn't be Val or Jeff. They've already been to space. Bill and Bob need some time up in LKO. Get that time building in. So we put them in this like passenger capsule here and send it up to orbit here uh just have enough delta v in this rocket to make orbit you can see how close the margins were but they do end up making it to space and we are able to spin stabilize with the rcs we have here and um that barbecue roll that we've got going on is just enough to power the craft so we got some great views inside the passenger cockpit here coming up um We'll, we'll show it here in a second. Bill and Bob have a great view of Earth, or sorry, Kerbin. Yeah, this is not the real solar system. This is Kerbin. Um, but I needed to put up the comm network before this because this is actually all probe controlled. Bill and Bob are just merely passengers. Nothing they can do in the case of an emergency. They are just riding out the storm in this case. So with the comm network, we're able to actually connect to this thing and control it 24-7, which is fantastic. Um, yeah, Bill and Bob, great views of the planet. And we go ahead and go on to our Moon Lander. This is Moon Explorer 10 and the first attempt to land something on the Moon. We're getting ready to actually put a Kerbal on the Moon here soon if everything goes well. Um, we're going to start really exploring a lot of... Uh, a lot of the mun on like the surface getting all those high value science points and also going to minmus too so a lot to be looking forward to as our space program really starts to progress at this point 
we extend the antenna and we get ourselves going yeah so pretty cool launch we actually get really close to the endurance over there i'm kind of like hovering the mouse over it um you can see it with a distant object enhancement mod which actually kind of shows it as a dot in the distance as you would in real life so yeah pretty cool um but we do get to the mun here and everything is going well just enough fuel in that uh second stage to deorbit ourselves and we're going to rely on the lander's engine to get us the rest of the way the landing gear actually fails but it's also like just stuck open so i guess it's okay um so yeah i guess it's all working out except for our thrust to weight ratio i completely overestimated how much thrust we were going to get on this thing so we promptly smack into the mun yeah, a bit disappointing because we were so close to landing, we had all the hardware, everything worked perfectly. But, we failed, kind of. You see, our dish actually survived. The root part survived on the mun, so we completed the contract actually, so a huge win for us here. A lot of money, don't need to send another one of these missions, so really great news. We set an alarm to come back to Bill and Bob when 30 days was up, and it is up. We've completed the contract finally, and we are ready to send them home. So here we go, deorbit successful. We're going to decouple the module here and drift down to Kerbin. This is a very difficult mission to pull off with only 30 parts because there's so many life support features that you need to include into this craft to make them survive 30 days. Um, yeah, so it really was a difficult thing to pull off with only 30 parts. Just about worked, though. Uh, we make it through the atmosphere, spinning wildly out of control, but we got a parachute, and that slows us down to a safe enough speed to splash down on Kerbin's water. So a successful mission, Bill and Bob setting the record for space endurance. Now, this is a great time to showcase the Final Frontier mod, which showcases all these ribbons that the Kerbals earn. So you can kind of go through and look what awards they've been given and what they've completed over the past. So pretty cool stuff. Now, we've also, uh, well, yeah, we lose a booster on this flight, but before I talk about what this thing is, we have upgraded the VAB and unlocked some new parts. So we've incorporated into this launch. And what is this launch I'm here, you asking? Well, this is our MUN Reconnaissance Orbiter. And as the name probably gives away, we are going to the MUN and we are going to do a bunch of science in orbit, just like the real uh, Moon Reconnaissance Orbiter. And you can see here that uh, we're getting an eclipse too from the MUN, so kind of a cool sign of things to come, I guess. Um, also, I think I said the Moon Reconnaissance Orbiter, it's actually the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. But uh, this is our Moon Reconnaissance Orbiter that we're sending up. We have two dishes, so it can act as a relay too. We've got a altimeter scanner for ScanSat, and we've also got a biome and uh, imager scanner thing on it as well. So we can take some colored pictures of the Moon as well as radar data. So this is us just in orbit, getting all the data that we need, transmitting it back home, completing the contracts, and getting loads of money. This thing is really going to pay itself off pretty fast because we do two ScanSat contracts. It acts as a relay as well, and we also beam back some science. And that kind of wraps up the primary mission for Mun Explorer, and we hop over to our first Minmus satellite. Well, this is actually the fifth one. Let me show you what happened to the first four. So as you can see from that short little montage there that our SRB and just overall design was kind of flawed. So it did not work out for those first four launches in the slightest. The first three had those SRB failures and then the fourth one succumbed to aerodynamic pressure because there was not enough fins on the bottom. And we need to have that center of mass above the center of lift or else we're going to have crazy stability issues, which we had. 
But the rest of this mission on Mun Explorer 5 goes off without a hitch. We don't have the upgraded tracking station yet, so we have to just kind of eyeball this, which is a lot harder to do than it is to fly to the Mun because Midmus is far out there and it's on a um, inclination relative to Kerbin's equator. So we don't actually quite get into orbit here. We don't have really the fuel to do this. Um, and those landing gear were really just like optimistic hardware I put on just before we launch this thing. So we do end up getting a flyby though. We do get some science and we do return home, but not in one piece. You can see the heat shield has orientated itself the wrong way because another lesson in center of mass and center of lift just makes this thing unstable and promptly destroys itself on re-entry. Here's the uh, transfer landing uh, stage, I guess you could call it, uh, just re-entering the atmosphere and getting destroyed. But we do get the tracking station and we do send another attempt to Minmus. This time it's a little better. We've got a better descent stage. We've added some more RCS control. I don't think we had it on that one. Um, the center of uh, mass too was a bit off on Minmus Explorer 5, so there's a lot of things that this craft is fixing and it's making it a whole lot simpler to get up to that minty moon of Kerbins. So here's the transfer burn up to Minmus. All goes well. We deploy our antennas and we fly all the way up to Minmus and it goes great. So yeah, here we are just getting a capture. And we have so much Delta V at this point. I'm like, well, let's go for a landing. We've brought the landing gear just in case and we've got the fuel now. So we attempt the uh, landing near the poles here, which is a little dicey because Kerbin is going to be right on the uh, edge of the um, skyline, I guess you can say, just right above the terrain. So if I lose connection, it's not going to be a good time for Mimis Explorer, especially since we are on the dark side of the moon or the moon, so we would lose battery quite fast. But regardless of all these challenges, we do in fact make it to the surface here. Yes, we come down at a graceful 3.4 meters per second and touch down on the minty moon. We do some analysis of the body and realize it is not made of ice cream. So unfortunately, we cannot mine this moon for its tasty treats as we once thought we could. But uh, we do successfully get a ton of science, we complete a ton of contracts, world first, and all goes very well. So the only thing left to do is say goodbye to the moon and head back to Gerben. We take a very um, polar transfer, I guess you can say, back to Gerben. So we actually don't really cross the radiation belts at all. So if we're sending a Kerbal mission to Minmus or something like that, maybe the Mun or whatever, we sh could take a polar transfer orbit, I guess, and avoid all that. Honestly, that's probably going to be more important for stuff like Sarnus or Jewel missions, where the radiation belts around those massive planets are truly terrifying. If you go into the hot zone of the inner belt on Jewel, you're probably going to get cooked within a few minutes, so we'll have to avoid that. But yes, we do, in fact, make it safely back. And we come to our final mission of the episode. Yes, we're actually going to the Mun this episode, believe it or not. We've already got the parts, we've got the science, and we've got Jebediah Kerman at the helm. So what can go wrong? We have so much boosters equipped to this thing. This is the largest vehicle we've ever launched. And we also have an upgraded mission control and astronaut complex, so we can do our EVAs and mission planning while in orbit so we can create all these fancy maneuvers and everything so we are truly playing the game at this point and you can see just how many parts there are in this thing we've got the two reliance on the side and a swivel in the middle a ton of fins on the boosters it's time to ditch those and they uh, just ditch beautifully off the side there just fall back to Kerbin. i kind of like this core stage it reminds me of the uh, soyuz or the r7 style rocket and then I also purposely made these fairings to deploy like the Saturn uh, V's third stage with holding the lander. This is just a direct descent though, so we don't have a lander. Um, there they go right there. Clamshell deploy for the win. I was going to build, well I actually did build a Soviet style approach to this mission where Jeb would EVA over to the lander, ditch the lander, lander would land, and then come back up to orbit to meet the return vehicle. But that proved to be just a little more expensive than this option. 
so we opted to fly to the Mon with this thing instead. And this has so much Delta V, we could do some biome hopping in the future. But anyways, I'm missing the awesomeness of EVA that Jebediah is experiencing in LKO. He hops into the module and we go on off to the Mon. Here's our Transmooner Injection Burn. And it goes off without a hitch. That core stage is a ton of fuel, that third transfer stage thing we got there. Um, and that's enough to get us all the way to the Mun, orbit the Mun, and do a deorbit burn. So very handy stage we got there. And here's our capture burn as well. We've included the max amount of shielding as we can, I believe, on the uh, command pod here. So Jebedi Kerman doesn't even go up 1% in radiation this mission. So that is a big win for us. We can continue doing this mission without any worries whatsoever. He is at 4% lifetime radiation from our previous episodes, but uh, he still has a long life ahead of him. So that is great, but here we are coming down to the surface, and we actually take a graceful touchdown. Jebediah Kerman for the win, and here it is, touchdown, come on, there we go, contact light. Great job, Jebediah. You are the first Gerbonaut to ever touch another celestial body, and we get some great beauty shots here. We're going to spend a lot of time on this mission because this is a landmark in our space program. But here we are, Jebediah German taking the first graceful steps onto the surface, breaking his back, you know, doing what a Kerbal does. We're going to get another uh, picture of Jebediah in agony right now. Although he is smiling, he is on the mun after all. And here we are, planting the flag, doing the otters, and marking some inspirational words for future generations of Kerbal Knots. And there we go, Chippadai Kerman on the mud. We have done it, the biggest landmark of the series. And of course, this thing is so much Delta V that we can just make it back without even using that third stage or the, the final return stage that we have up there. So in the future, we'll definitely be doing some biome hopping with this, or we'll throw on a materials bay or something like that. So a lot of possibilities for future missions on this. And this is the Perception X, by the way. I forgot to mention this because it is part of the Perception program, changing the perception of Gerbilkind, which I believe it has done. But uh, yeah, that wraps up our final mission. There's only a few things left to do. Show you guys how much science and money we have earned from this mission, which is quite a lot. Over 200 science, over I believe 180,000 funds, yes. And we are going to use that to unlock some new nodes. And with that guys, I do hope you've enjoyed this episode. This has been a fun one to make and I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you later.